Uh-huh. What about the um, position that it's okay to invest in stocks because it's taking a risk? Yeah, my, you know, my Sheikh Muhammad Ahmed Shaybani, who was one of my teachers, he just didn't like, he didn't give any opinions about stock because he was just bothered by them. I think the problem with stocks is that the vast majority of companies that you're investing in are doing a lot of haram stuff, mm. right? And your, your money has to be pure. I don't, there's Muslims that do a lot of stuff, <laughs> you know. Just because they're Muslims, I don't, yeah, I mean, that doesn't mean a whole lot to me, personally. You know, Muslim financing houses, Muslim insurance company, Muslim baseball, Muslim football, Muslim, Muslim liquor stores. <laughs> you know, there's Muslim liquor stores. We've got, like, most of the liquor stores in San Francisco are run by, uh, a lot of them are run by, quote-unquote, Muslims. And you go, you know, I mean, don't go into these places, but... Uh, you, you know, on the cash register, they'll have an eye of Quran, have them in Fadli Rabbi or something, you know. Yeah, you see it. Lots, yeah. And it's interesting that they go to the, a lot of times, the areas like where there's a lot of minorities and things like that, which they are replacing. It's interesting, but traditionally, that was what the Jewish role in this country, right? In this country, um, the Jews would often go into. Uh, like ghetto areas, and they would open stores and, and, and do these things. And this is where a lot of the animosity of the uh, host community uh, towards the Jews came from. It's because, the, the, you know, they would see them as parasitical. You know, they're living off our community and they're not contributing to the community. And this is exactly how the, the Muslims are being viewed now in a lot of the minority communities, really, which is really sad because there's just a lot of anger towards the communities. And I think it's justifiable anger. You know? I mean, what are you doing going in as a Muslim? What are you doing going in and providing liquor for people who the liquor is literally being used to oppress them? I mean, you can go into, you go into like, you know, Oakland and every third s- store is a liquor store. You can get, you know, it's easier for, for children there to get liquor than it is to get vegetables or milk. In a lot. I mean, seriously, it's unbelievable. And, and Muslims are participating in that? I mean, their, their ancestors brought light to the places they went to. Really, they're, the Yemeni merchants, you know, the Arabian merchants, the Indian merchants, they went around and they brought Islam to people. And, and these people, they're just, you know, and they're dark. You look at them, they have no light in their faces. They're just dark people, you know. And there was a mosque, I know a place it was built, and it was built, you know, these guys all had liquor stores, selling pornographic magazines and, and liquor. And then they're at the mosque. I mean, building a mosque on that type of money and arguing about... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I saw a guy come into the, uh, to a halal grocery store to buy halal meat, and somebody told me he had a restaurant. And I knew where the restaurant was, and I wanted to find out if the meat was halal, because I thought, you know, there was a place I could take my family or something like that. And I asked him, he said, no, the meat's not halal. And I said, well, why don't you provide meat? And he said, because we only use one part of the meat, and when we use so much, it'd be really hard. We haven't found providers. And, and then he said, and, and anyway, you know, I don't think it would change the Muslim business that much, because, you know, we sell alcohol. And I'm thinking, you know, what's this guy doing buying halal meat? And this is a type of real, uh, I mean, you're dealing with some very, very psychotic conditions here, right? Because here's somebody so disconnected from reality. Like the source of his income is haram. And, and he's worried about the meat he's eating, whether it was the biha or not. And it's just very odd. Muslims really strange sometimes. He has his mother living with him, and she says it has to be halal meat or whatever. That's a nice way of looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Mustaman, what are the laws for Mustaman? Mustaman is they have to follow. They follow the agreements of the conditions that they came into the country. What the host country, they put stipulations on you when you come in. 
and you tell them, I'm going to abide by your laws. And they've trusted you. And that trust is binding because you're a Muslim. And a Muslim doesn't betray trust, even to a non-Muslim. You know. If your king is an illegal alien, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah.